Well, this is it. The Raven 556 by Lockhart Tactical. Let's talk about it. So this Raven 556 is just about as close as you're going to come in Canada to a direct impingement AR-15 type rifle. Now it's not an AR-15, so RCMP, look away. Not by specification, it's not. We're gonna dive into it today and what I think about it. There's not a whole lot of videos floating around on YouTube about this thing. So we are going to take it apart, see what the internals are like. I probably have closing in on 900 rounds through this thing at this point. Um, had the rifle for a couple weeks. Um, it's a very interesting rifle, um, to say the least. <laughs> I did miss the AR-15 train before the May 2020 ban. So it's very interesting. So I just finished up the range with this thing. I'll probably put 400 rounds through it today. I haven't cleaned it. Um, I've obviously spray painted the rifle because why aren't you fucking spray painting your rifles? What are you, for resale value, not spray painting them? Anyway, that's stupid. Let's first go over, tip to butt, what I have done to this particular rifle. So starting at the front, I'll go in here. Griffin Armament, uh, Blast Shield Gen 2. It's the taper mount. Just not to be a dickhead to the range buddies. I've got the Griffin Armaments Paladin 2 muzzle brake on it. Absolutely beautiful muzzle brake. Um, not overbearing, I'd say, as you'll see in the shooting footage. Um, doesn't dive down. It stays fairly flat um, on this particular rifle, which is good. Uh, cheap Odin Mini. Uh Kind of a piece of shit, but that's what I put on it for now. You can see the mount already loose just even after shooting today. The quick detach features, fairly nice. It's kind of a cool feature. Um, doesn't take standard batteries, which is annoying, but that's besides the point. I put a Strike Industries adjustable gas block on it. Um, we'll dive more into the gassing issues that I've had with this rifle post break in. Um, I think a lot of that to do is the 18.6 barrel, um, beautifully accurate barrel. However, I think a mid length system with a little bit more dwell time up front is what we need here. Cause as you'll see in the shooting footage, maxed out open is still slightly under gassed and it's causing some issues. Now that's not my overall view of the rifle. Uh, as you know, AR-15s are very modular. Again, this isn't an AR-15, but very modular rifle. So you would say for a $2,900 rifle or 28 something I paid for it, um, you'd want everything to be set up right from the factory, um, the gassing system. However, I'm still under gassed and I was under gassed with the stock gas block that it came with and I've checked the dimensions of the gas hole, um, the alignment of the gas block, both, both the new one and the stock one. Still nothing, I can't, maxed out, cannot uh, seem to get this thing to be gassed correctly. So I think in the future, I am going to put a mid-length system in this, give it a bit more dwell time up front, and therefore a little more pressure through the gas system back to the bolt. Um, but that is the dilemma with my gas system. Anyway, uh, chopped Magpul foregrip. Um, I chop them cause that's what cool fast guys do. Um, moving down, uh, I have a American defense 1.93 inch mount LPVO mount. You can see with the quick detach. Beautiful system, um, stays true even through taking on and off. Um, 
nothing but good things to say. I will say it's a bit heavy, but besides the point, I got a Swamp Fox Arrowhead one two, run through 10. Again, bang for your buck optic. Absolutely beautiful. I think it was 800 and something Canadian. Um, nothing but good things to say. Again, a little bit heavy, but whatever. I did opt for the brass deflector on this guy here because you need all the goodies. And silly that most Canadian tactical rifles don't come with a brass deflector. Just silly. Did also get the left side cover. Um, again, not much to say about it. Just keep dirt and grime out of the rifle. Ideally, you want to not get the interior dirty. Um, I really, really, really like this charging handle. Uh, it's very geysley esque um, nothing but good things to say about it. I've seen some people talking about the screws walking loose on these guys. Um, just tighten them down. I mean, a little bit of Loctite I threw on these guys and I haven't had any issue, which is, uh, good. Cause we don't have enough top charging handle rifles in Canada at the moment. Uh, moving back, I got a VLTOR um stock on it uh beautiful beautiful uh, i have a b5 systems pistol grip probably my favorite pistol grip on the market have them on a few rifles and a magpul ms4 qd sling so let's move on to taking this thing apart and we will see how filthy this thing is. So it's got four pins. As you can see, the Raven is interesting because there's gonna be caliber kits for this thing. So basically you're replacing the magwell as one unit. And the serialized part is the trigger group, um, obviously without the magwell. So it's kind of an interesting rifle that way. Um, there will be 308 kit, I think coming out for it eventually. Again, I'm not sure on the timeline. Uh, there'll be, who knows? Who knows what in the future we can get for it. Um, there's rumor of another, or of a uh, belt fed system as well for 22 LR, which as you know in Canada, doesn't abide by magazine capacity limits, rules, dumb laws. So that'll be cool. That'll be very interesting um, as far as that goes. So let's take this thing apart here. Just pop the pin. These are a little stiff from the factory. You can see, not captive. This one can be a bit of a pain in the ass. There we go. So let's drop the bolt. There we go. And separates like so. Very Armalite rifle-esque, one might say. Put that aside. So you see in here, I have the Trigger Tech. It's a three pound fix, or three and a half pound fix. Don't quote me on that. Um, not entirely sure. I did also upgrade the safety lever, the safety itself. Uh, to a trigger tech as well, 45 degree throw, which is tactical, as I might say. Uh, very nice trigger. Nothing but good things to say about it. I'm not a huge, in all my other firearms, I'm not a huge aftermarket trigger guy. Um, I think mil spec just does just okay. Um, but I will say this might have changed me a little bit because this thing is beautiful. Beautiful trigger. Um, as you can see, filthy in there, but that's the way you want your rifles is used. Comes from the factory with a 3.8 ounce buffer weight. The spring I'm not entirely sure of. Here is the ambidextrous uh, bolt release. You can kind of see the function there. You can see how it kind of claws open. Um, as far as I know, fairly standard. And also you get ambidextrous 
mag release as well. No issues with this system. Um, I've seen some guys having issues with machining on the bolt release. I'm thinking of Bat's video where he, for the entirety of his review, he had no uh, bolt lockback uh, whatsoever. And that's, I've seen a few posts of guys having issues with machining on this part in particular. Um, I, however, no issue whatsoever um, with the actual function of the lever, uh, which is good. So moving on to the upper, so charging handle slides, bolt comes out, bolt carrier, don't flame me in the comments for saying bolt. Here is your charging handle. Um, again, it is proprietary. It's not um, interchangeable with either AR10 or AR15 charging handles. However, I don't think this is an issue. Um, these are the laws we have in Canada and things have to be different to, to pass FRT. So no issue with this. This one is as good as Geisley or anything um, comparable. So no issues with that. Uh, moving on to the bolt carrier. Um, as you can see, fairly gummed up. Did some shooting today uh, with her. I believe it is slightly longer than a standard uh, mil spec carrier. Um, however, takes bolts and gas rings takes the same gas key and cam pin and obviously this pin here um, it's all the same firing pin as well is all interchangeable which is really nice for you AR guys that have uh, got it banned after Today, our May 1st 2020 OIC um, which is a whole other video um, here is the firing pin again standard um, we will drop the cam pin here. Standard AR mil spec cam pin. Here is your bolt itself. Uh, as you can see, gas rings, all fairly standard. Um, very dirty, pardon me. Um, no issue with this. I mean, it's nice to have Lots of parts on the market for wear parts such as the bolt. Obviously you can see MPI inspected, um, which I believe is magnetic particle inspection. Don't quote me on that, but I believe that's to make sure there's no burrs or anything that is gonna um, screw with your rifle. So that's that. We got to the bolt carrier. Uh, I went for, I upgraded to a chrome lined gas key. Um, I did not stake it. I am, uh, I just, I don't, I don't feel the need to stake a uh, gas key as long as you torque it down to spec. I know some guys will say, um, that's ridiculous. You should always stake your gas keys, but I didn't. I have sealed it. It was not sealed from the factory, I don't believe. Um, so a little bit of gasket seal around the actual gas hole that leads to these vents, um, just for my OCD's sake. Um, obviously torqued down, I think 58 foot pound, inch pounds, sorry, 58 inch pounds on this guy. And I've had no issue with the gas key or the, or the bolt carrier. Um, in general, I think it's made out of a uh, very reputable metal. Um, this is, however, the Gen 2. I think we're past, at this point, the embarrassing Gen 1 bolt carrier, which was much thinner here, much, much thinner, and guys were cracking right there after a boat. Like I've seen some as low as 100 rounds up to 300 rounds, like just big crack in the bolt carrier. Um, not acceptable. I don't love a skeletonized bolt carrier. I think it is the heart of a rifle. So I get that you want to maintain the weight of a shorter 
AR-15 bolt carrier in uh, in a longer package, um, making it not an AR-15 as we need in Canada, because we, um, yeah, yeah, I go on and on about that, but, so that's that, that is the bolt carrier, um, quality metal, quality, the machining, I'd say the machining on this rifle is phenomenal, um, they have done a really good job at Lockhart Tactical, dialing in the machine work, um, everything feels beautiful, it feels like a $2,800 rifle in my eyes, does it run like one? That is the next thing. So you'll see in some of the shooting footage, um, I was having issues with bolt lockup. And again, I've, I've, I've changed this, the gas system, um, down to a new tube. Uh, that is a new gas key. I said I upgraded to the chrome line and a Strike Industries adjustable collar gas block. Again, I've checked alignment. Um, I've checked the gauge of the gas hole itself. No issues on that front from what Lockhart Tactical says to check for. I think a 764 drill bit is what you're supposed to have for diameter on your gas hole. Um, I've checked that, it's good. And yet I'm still having and this is maxed out on this this gas block and it was with the factory one as well i was having the same issues um maxed out open which i don't like anyway because as i seen today as i dumped rounds through this rifle as it fouled up and how i would normally just give it a click open get more gas flowing through the thing to keep it running it i had no option because it was already maxed out to start the day so what I'm at now, I love the system. I think it's the best option in Canada if you're looking for that AR-esque rifle. Um, very maneuverable, very light. However, I need a $2,800 rifle. And I don't know if guys are having issues with this, um, with these new rifle length gas systems with actual gas pressure. I don't know. Um, I, however, am. It's a pretty penny for a rifle that doesn't work the way you need it to and you want it to um, when you're shooting. So, not the end of the world. Um, like I said, these rifles or these style of rifles are very modular. It is nothing for me to take the barrel out, throw a mid-length gas system in it, because I think that is what's going on with it as far as dwell time goes. There's just not a lot of time past the gas block for the gas tube to get pressurized as it's pushing the bullet through the barrel. So what I'm going to try next um, is a mid-length gas system. Again, keep this. I love this Strike Industries collar. Um, wasn't a huge fan of the adjustable gas block on the, or the stock uh, Lockhart Tactical one. Again, that's just personal preference. I just, I don't like the Allen wrench style. Uh, it's much easier for me to reach in there with the, uh, the end of a round and uh, turn this than it is to take the handguard off um, and use a, or I, mean, I suppose you could use a long Allen wrench. Um, I just fucking hate Allen wrenches, man. No need for Allen wrenches. <laughs> um, overall thoughts? Would I recommend somebody buy this rifle? If you're a gun nut and you love the idea of having an ARS rifle, um, non-restricted platform, then yeah, I say it is totally worth the money. There are some flaws. Um, again, I don't put any blame on Lockhart Tactical. As far as I know, they're relatively new um, comparatively. Uh, to other companies uh, with making rifles. I think this is a very interesting platform. Um, the machining is awesome. It's just, as far as I can tell, it is the woes of designing a rifle from scratch as a small outfit. Um, as far as I know, Samuel is uh, 
not a one-man show, I don't think, but he, it's a very small outfit out of Vancouver Island. And that just tried to wrap my brain around starting a firearms manufacturing company, passing FRTs and all our dumb laws and uh, manufacturing a pretty sweet rifle. Um, would I take a Daniel Defense uh, AR over something like this? Of course, but that's not the reality of our beautiful country. This is what we make do with. So I'll go ahead and reassemble the rifle for you guys here. Fairly easy, um, satisfying. As you gun nuts know, I love taking shit apart and putting it back together. Find your home. There we go. There it is, all reassembled. Again, I think this rifle is a very cool platform. Um, if you're looking into doing cool fast guy stuff and shooting fast and moving and all that, this is the platform in a non-restricted package, which is nice. Um, 18 six barrel, they do also come in a builder's kit. Um, which is the bolt carrier and uh, the receiver, upper and lower, which is nice if uh, those guys with uh, restricted ARs that got banned can uh, register this and throw their 10.5 on it, which is, uh, I think, eventually what I'm going to do and get another receiver and uh, get a... Uh, a 10.5 or something going on this platform because I think it would uh, work great and very cool. So, for anybody asking, this is Desert Night Camo. Um, again, spray paint your guns. Don't, uh, you're not preserving resale value. Use your guns, spray paint your guns, camouflage your guns. Use your guns, go out and shoot. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed my review on the Raven 556. Remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm going to be trying to dive into a few more firearms reviews. Um, I'm definitely a bit of a gun nut here in Canada. And we need more reviews on our weird proprietary rifles. And uh, I will be diving in. So remember to subscribe. I hope you liked this video. I hope it answered a few questions, um, seeing me take shit apart and put it back together. And uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.